Hi and welcome. I'm Dave Cate of David Cate Photography. And today we're going to talk about dodging and burning using curved layers. It's pretty simple, but it's very, very powerful technique. Okay, so here I have um, on my screen here an image, and this is just an image that I took when I was at Valley of Fire State Park. It's nothing special. It's just something for me to demonstrate on. And the first part of this process is you have to create the layers in which you're going to do your dodging and burning. And it's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, if you go over here to your properties um, tab, which you see right here, and you go down here to the bottom, especially here in the layers tab, which you can see I, I've got highlighted, I've got my background layer right here. You come down here to this little half circle, it's half dark and half white. And if you click on that, you're going to have the opportunity to create, well, as soon as it comes up, there we go. You can have the opportunity to create all kinds of different adjustment layers that you can make adjustments to your image. And one of the more um, feature rich ones, if, if, if you will, is one that's called a curves layer. And that's what I'm going to click on here is a curves layer. Now, this is going to be my initial layer and basically I'm going to use this layer once I get it all set up and I'm going to duplicate it and then change the curve and I'll have my dodge and burn layer. Um, one of the things that we have to do here is we want to affect the tones only and not the colors as well. And so I'm going to change the blend mode here and you do that by just clicking over here in this little area. Right now it's got a normal blend mode and I want to change that to luminosity. I only want to affect the brightness and the darkness, but I don't want to change the color. So I don't want, um, when I darken for the colors to get, in this case, redder or bluer, I just want them to stay the same color. I just want to deepen the tones or lighten the tones, and whether I'm dodging or burning. So once I've got that set up, you notice because I've got the curves layer here highlighted, I've got my curve right up here in this properties panel right up here. And so I'm going to make this my dodge. And so for dodging, I want to brighten the brights. So what you're going to do, it's very, very simple. You're going to look at your image and you're going to adjust that curve until you get to the level of brightness is the maximum level of brightness that you want in your image, wherever it is that you're going to be dodging. And so you kind of have to just click on to the curve there and then while holding down your mouse button key you just lift it up and you notice that the image is brightening. So there's the regular and now I'm brightening up the image. And what I'm looking for is just to make sure that I don't have any places that are blown. I don't want any blown highlights. I just want it to be lighter and so I think I'm going to do it right about there. Now to apply this, um, I have to click Control I or invert that mask so that it's dark and then I can go ahead and I can paint um, where I want to do my dodging. So what I'm going to do here first though is I'm going to name this dodging because, or just dodge maybe, uh, dodge, there we go. So that's my dodge layer. And for right now, I'm going to highlight the uh, mask there, and I'm going to hit Control or Command I, and that inverts it. So that way, it takes away the results of that mask. And our paintbrush will have to be white so that we can reveal that brighter curve adjustment underneath where it is that we're painting for those areas that we want to brighten. So now that I've got that done, I can either hit Command or Control J to make a duplicate copy, 
or I can hold on to the layer here, just right mouse button click, or left mouse button click rather, and just hold on to the layer and drop it down here to the plus sign, and that will duplicate the layer, which is what I did right there. So I'm going to rename this burn. And what this burn layer, now I'm going to click on the mask and I'm going to do a control I because I want to invert it to white so I can see what the effects are. So there's my bright because remember this was a dodge and I'm going to make it a burn. So I'm going to click onto my, um, my curves adjustment right there. And you see the curves up here. So I'm going to bring the curve back down to where it was. And then I'm just going to hold on to it with my left mouse button. And I'm just going to come down here to the darker part of the image here. And I'm going to deepen and darken it. And again, look at your image and figure out how dark you want those shadows and the dark areas that you're going to do your burning. And once you've reached that maximum darkness, then it is then set. And now all I need to do is click on my mask again and hit control I to invert it. And there we go. There's my dodge and there's my burn. So let's go to dodge in here. <clears throat> and I'm going to select my paintbrush, which is right there, paintbrush. And I'm on white because my mask is black. So it's hiding, it's concealing and the white will then reveal that curves adjustment beneath all that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with my my camera was on my Wacom tablet. I didn't properly set myself up here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase um, Let me increase this to about 40% so that I can see it and show you how this works here. So here's my brush and I'm just going to hit this edge right here, just a little bit here along this edge because I just want to brighten that edge up a little bit. And I think I want to brighten this edge right here just a little bit. Now, one thing that you notice here is when I go over the edge, you notice that the layer beneath doesn't really brighten and that's because it's not part of that same tonal value as this edge right here and so you're able for the most part to go over edges and not worry about it now one way that you can control that even better because you will see just a tiny little bit of lightning right there and this is a little trick here and it gives you a great D deal of control, um, much finer control than you would really kind of think that you'd be able to have. And that is on this dodge layer right here, go over here to the right hand side near the, near the end of the edge there and then just double click. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring up a layer style dialog box. And what we're going to do is come down here to the blend if. And in the blend if here, what I want to do is I want to protect my darks. So anything that's dark, mid-tones, and up, I want to protect so that way I don't bleed over, if you will. And so what I'm going to do is if you look right up here, you'll notice that there's just a little bit of slight lightning right there. And we're going to get rid of that. So we're just going to slide this down. And you see, it kind of goes away right about there. And then what we're going to do, because we want to protect that whole range, is I'm going to press on my Alt key and then click on that little arrow to break it apart. And once it's clicked and broken apart, then I can go down and protect. So now what that's going to enable me to do then <clears throat> is that's going to enable me to paint and not lighten any of the dark areas. Even just a little bit, I'm protecting that range of tonal value from being lightened. So now if I go back here and I'm going to press back into my dodge here. So now, see, I can paint in here and nothing happens <clears throat> because these darks are now protected. And so I can come in here and I can lighten this edge up and I can 
do it without really worrying too much. I just want to do a little bit of light right there on the edge. A little bit of highlight right there. And a little bit of highlight right there. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just basically just highlighting those areas of my image. And you can see it here if I turn it off. Let me turn it off. There it is. And then if I turn it on, you can see those areas that I've highlighted. Now, the other nice thing is you can also play with either the curve. If the curve is too bright, then you can always adjust the curve down. Or if it's not bright enough, you can adjust the curve. So that's what's kind of nice about using these curves is you can adjust the curve that way. And if you want it more global, all you have to do is come down here to the opacity and you can adjust the opacity accordingly as well. So you can reduce the opacity, increase the opacity. So you get multiple different ways in which you can manage um, your dodging and burning. And on the burn layer, it's essentially the same thing. So I come up here to my burn and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to reduce my brush here because I got all these areas right here and I want to come in here and I want to burn these areas in order to make them stand out. Remember what I said in my last video, burning and dodging is really all about contrast control and what you're doing is you're providing visual contrast between the light areas of your image and the dark areas and the contrast um, control that dodging and burning provides provides a little bit of the ability to make your image look a little more 3D, a little more depth to it, which helps in terms of making your image pop, which is what I always find ends up happening when I dodge and burn. And again, I can use the same technique on my burn as I did on my dodge, and that is I can come over here, I can right mouse button click, there we go. And here's my layer style panel here. And this time I want to protect the brights. So I can actually just, I'm going to move this right here. And I'm going to look in here. And I want to protect some of that bright. So I'm going to move it. And you can see how we're protecting some of that from that curve adjustment. So we're going to go right about there. And then again, the same trick here is to hit your Alt key while clicking on the little arrow and it breaks it apart and then you're able to move that up and now I am protecting my bright areas so that way when I'm doing my burning here I don't have to worry about um, impacting my bright areas So I can come in here and I can burn to my heart's content. And again, I can't burn darker than what the curves adjustment is going to allow me. So in a sense, the curves adjustment provides a limiter. It prevents you from over darkening or over burning or over dodging and making things too, too light. So that way you get to control what that's going to look like. And it's pretty straightforward. It's not that overly difficult. And again, you can, you can adjust it by the opacity. See, you can see the difference there when I adjust that. And if I take it off, and you can see what I mean here by that dodging and burning provides a degree of depth and provides a degree of um, making an image look like it's 3D and not so much um, 2D and that's what dodging and burning does for us so there's my dodge and there's my burn and again I can adjust my dodge either by playing with my curve which in this case I think it's a little too bright so I'm going to drop it down just a tad bit there we go and that makes it look a little more natural. Yeah, that looks much more natural. And I think I'm going to do a little more dodging here. 
uh, just on this particular image here so that you can see what the effects look like. So I'm going to lighten that up. I'm going to lighten that up. Come here and lighten that up. And I think I'm going to lighten that little edge. And you can tell here that I'm not really impacting the color. I'm not making this richer or darker um, reds. The reds tones are pretty much staying the same. And again, that's because um, using the luminosity uh, blend mode, so all that I'm affecting, if you will, is just the tonal values and not the color values. So that way you get the lightning and the darkening that's a little more true to the image itself. See, so that's my dodging. And you can see what the effects there are. And I think I'm going to dial that down. That's still too bright for me. So I'm going to dial it down to about 70%. Yeah, that's much better. See, that's much more natural there. That's 70%. And then there's my burn. And again, what it does, if I was to put these into a group, it just makes it much easier if you can see it all together. So I'm going to make a group here, a group from layers, and I'm going to call this my dodging and burning. So now I can turn off and on the group, both the dodging and burning at the same time, and you can see what the effect is. So this is the image without the dodging and burning. And then that's with the dodging and burning. And you can see that it adds more depth. And these rocks just pop out. And that's really the whole point of dodging and burning. Is you're trying to provide a level of dimensionality to your image. That photography by its nature is very much a 2D um, art form. And by dodging and burning, you're able to provide enough contrast, if you will, between the darks and the lights that you give it a sense of depth. And so when people look at your images, they seem to have depth to them and um, it just makes them much more visually attractive. So that's basically dodging and burning using a curves adjustment and using um, a blend if. And again, it's not really that difficult to do. You just have to play with it and experiment. Um, but I find that this is my favorite way of dodging and burning. So that way I end up getting the best possible um, images by bringing out some of that great, great detail. The, uh, especially because I do a lot of desert photography and I'm um, photographing a lot of um, places where you just get a lot of rock. A really nice way to kind of bring out the rock and bring out the dimensionality of it that I saw when I was there. And even though this light is somewhat flat because this is um, uh, this is early morning light right around dawn and it was overcast skies and so the light tends to be somewhat flat. And so by dodging and burning you're able to bring out that contrast. Um, that the natural scene itself uh, was lacking. So that's basically it. That's dodging and burning. So if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.